Good evening. Thank you all for being here. So, yep, my name is Hillary Martins. I am from the University of Montana. And my research focus is on earth deformation driven by surface mass loading. Um, broadly defined, surface mass loading is the process by which masses largely external to the solid earth apply pressure to the surface. And examples of loads include the oceans, the atmosphere, and continental water, such as surface and groundwater, mountain snow, and glaciers. Um, because the earth isn't perfectly rigid, the earth deforms and flexes under the weight of the loads in a manner that's governed by earth's interior structure. Furthermore, loading, loading occurs over a broad range of spatial and temporal scales, producing a rich spectrum of responses. Using ground and space-based geodetic networks, including the global positioning system, we can track both the distribution and the evolution of the surface masses themselves, as well as the solid Earth's response to that loading. Here, we have a kinematic GPS time series spanning eight days, which is dominated by loading due to the ocean tides. The blue dots represent the GPS-inferred vertical surface displacements, and the black line shows the model, which in this case is the tidal harmonic fit to the data. The Earth's atmosphere and continental hydrosphere also load the surface. And here we can see Earth's response to atmospheric loading over an eight-month period, as well as Earth's response to seasonal changes in water storage over an eight-year period. So given that we can measure Earth's response to a variety of surface mass loads with relatively high precision, the question is, what can we learn and achieve from this information? And one key point to make is that these mass loading signals are ubiquitous in all geodetic time series. And as a result, it's imperative that we understand surface mass loading accurately in order to effectively distinguish loading deformation from other geophysical signals, including tectonic and volcanic deformation. In tectonically active Japan, for example, modeling and removing mass loading effects that are not accounted for during standard GPS data processing can reduce time series scatter by up to 10 to 50% depending on location. Um, on the flip side, exciting subdisciplines of geodesy are emerging to explore mass load response as a signal rather than as noise. And a prime example is constraining surface mass changes by examining the deformation patterns produced by the loads. So we can, for instance, use dense GPS networks to track the storage and movement of water through landscapes, which can inform the management of our limited water resources, especially during periods of extended drought. Another important application is the opportunity to exploit loading signals to probe the material properties of Earth's interior across a range of spatial and time scales. In other words, um, geodetic tomography. So one of the most prominent types of loading comes from the redistribution of ocean water by tidal forcing, which is known as ocean tidal loading. And tidal tomography is especially promising because the loads are relatively well constrained, large in amplitude, and periodic. The movie here shows the temporal evolution of the M2 ocean tide, which has a period of 12.42 hours and ranges in amplitude up to about one meter. High tide is shown in red and low tide is shown in blue. We can then superimpose over the continents the solid Earth's vertical displacement response to the ocean tidal loading. So the surface is depressed during the high tide and then rebounds during low tide. The modeled results shown here are based on PREM structure. Zooming in uh, now on South America, we can examine the modeled response to tidal loading in three components. So the size and orientation of each ellipse depict the horizontal response and the color depicts the amplitude of the vertical response. Comparing the modeled response with the observed response derived from GPS time series, we are hard pressed to decipher obvious differences at this scale, indicating that the models and measurements agree very well overall. Indeed, the residuals between the model and the observations are remarkably small, predominantly on the order of just a fraction of a millimeter, and nevertheless, the residuals exhibit spatial coherency and cannot be fully explained by GPS or tide model errors. As a result, the residuals may reflect deficiencies in the assumed Earth structure, 
perhaps suggesting sensitivity to lateral structural variations due to the South American craton and motivating tomographic investigations. So in summary, recent advances in measuring and modeling load-induced earth deformation bring great opportunities, including enhancing the detection of tectonic deformation, constraining surface mass changes, and probing earth structure. So thank you.